the water is going through various uh, vibration modes as John changes the tuning on some of the uh, driving circuits to the Tesla coils, and different interference patterns are created on the surface of the water. And you note that the cup is dancing around slightly on top of the milk carton. We're looking essentially straight down onto the uh, milk carton, and the nearest field-producing elements are at least six feet away from this active zone. Uh, the next sequence uh, shows something that had uh, only been witnessed uh, once, and uh, John thought he was hallucinating. It was a sheet of iridescence that descended uh, over the active area between uh, the lathes, and here it is now, and you notice that it is a multicolored sheet with a central spine through it which changes from blue at the top to pink at the bottom. You can see parts of the lathe and other bits of apparatus behind and through this uh, sheet of iridescence. It hung there for uh, just about as long as you saw. Now, other uh, energetic effects are being shown. In this case, he is holding down a quarter-inch rat tail file uh, by two plywood planks on, and there's a resting on a uh, wooden board, and there are several Canadian coins uh, nearby. And in this case, you notice that the boards are not scorched by the intense heat that is generated by this uh, quarter-inch file uh, being heated to incandescence, intense incandescence, uh, uh, such, uh, to such a degree that it actually melts and breaks apart. Coins are unaffected beside it, and there are no connections, no electrical connections to this uh, rat tail file. And uh, as well, you notice the boards are not being scorched. On occasion, however, it does have spontaneous combustion occurring in boards and in other objects, including concrete. The next sequence will show some of the uh, uh, attempted levitations and the levitation of rather massive objects. In this case, a plywood plank, which uh, gets up on its end, but doesn't quite take off. And here it is up on its end and wobbling very slowly. Now John is attempting to control the field and doesn't quite get it up. In this case, a film box that was storing the Super 8 film that was being used does levitate and flips around in and out of the field. You'll see more uh, examples of this in later footage from the 1988-1989 period. He was trying to get the uh, socket tool to go, but here he has a close-up of the uh, camping spoon uh, held down by a spool of wire is uh, effectively plasticized and wobbles up and down in the field. This uh, small D-shaped uh, cross-section piece of steel weighs about a quarter to half a pound, and it is trying to take off. In fact, the board uh, underneath it is trying to take off. The board is being held down at its back end by slipping it underneath the lip of the lathe, uh, which is out of the picture uh, covered by a, a piece of um, drop cloth so as not to confuse the picture. Here is a composite piece of material, uh, including a number of aloe steel and uh, wood, and here's another one that uh, is not at the correct geometry to take off. All it does is sit on its head and wobble back and forth. John loved these close-up shots, uh, and unfortunately you don't get a large-scale view of the whole uh, uh, active area, but there goes that D-shaped piece once it's sitting in the proper orientation. Notice that it, these things twist with a left-handed twist as they take off. Uh, here is that D-shaped piece in the wrong orientation. It's not taking off. And the wedge-shaped piece we'll see a little later. Notice it takes off a distinctive left-handed twist with the thumb, w imagining your thumb uh, in the direction of travel. And now here's this wedge-shaped piece once again on its edge, and it tries to take off in one flop on one side, and it doesn't quite have enough energy to take off. It just flips over and rests uh, on the other side, and there's an upward force continually present, which flops it back to the other side, and it continues to oscillate uh, back and forth with a natural frequency of vibration that uh, has to do with its own mass and its own uh, mass distribution. So there it is, a uh, clear shot on its edge, uh, bouncing back and forth. Remember that there are no field coils or magnets or anything below or above or anywhere close than six feet laterally away from this active area. Uh, I should also note that these effects, although they look appear, they appear to be happening uh, one after another, took anywhere from three to six hours to occur, 
And uh, this sequence was shot over many days in John's laboratory in Lynn Valley in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Here are two objects in the field, only one of which will take off. It is the small D-shaped uh, piece of steel. And there are several other shots, a uh, sequence here, that have numerous objects in the field and only one will take off, showing the uh, uh, field's preference for particularly shaped objects. Here is a four-pound shot ball from a ball mill, and here's a composite piece with uh, bronze on one and a copper on the other, and the heavy end will take off first, as you'll see in this sequence. There it goes. Once again, we have the uh, wobbling uh, wedge that is uh, sitting there uh, rocking back and forth. The combined power, I should add, that is powering all this is about 1,500 watts average power from a 110-volt outlet. you notice that in that takeoff, there was a slight hovering a few inches above the plywood table before the plate actually took off and that only the plate uh, and not the other objects took off. In this case, we have a large aluminum billet with a hole through it. The inch ruler is used on the side to get an idea of scale. And there's a plastic simulated wood bowl moving around beside it. The aluminum piece is between five and six inches in diameter and approximately four inches and a half in height with a two inch diameter hole through and is a solid piece. Notice there is independent move movement of both the aluminum piece and the board and ruler on which it's sitting, quite independent from the bowl. It's as if all actions are under complete control of someone's actus, a, active consciousness. In this case, another object is placed on top of the aluminum. It is a steel piece, square steel piece with a hole through it. And we'll see that these two objects can be taken as one object as if they are glued together or move independently as the machine and or John desires. In this case, you notice that the ruler is not stuck to the plywood. It can be moved by the bowl. And in some cases, the two metal pieces seem to be glued together. In some cases, not. When the aluminum is tipped up, you would expect to see the steel piece on top slide right off, but it does not. In this most amazing of sequences, we're back to the plywood board with a number of burn marks on in this case. And we have a nail puller that is sitting on end, and shortly it will take off. The plywood is supported by a two plastic pails behind, one partially in view, and the cardboard lamp carton is still in the picture. The ball in the background is a sphere from a ball mill that John has painted a dull silver, and it is approximately six inches to seven inches in diameter and has a very rough surface, as can be seen through the, the paint. In this case, two objects are in independent control, and shortly the nail puller will take off, and yet the ball will still be performing its antics. It's interesting to note as well that when the ball 
lands back down on the platform in which it's resting, it does not shake it. It does not move the platform. The platform does not recoil from the ball hitting, apparently hitting or resting on the platform. There's a pure a non-elastic collision when the ball comes down to rest apparently on the platform. The question arises, is the ball on the platform to begin with? Interesting motions are shown here. Slow up and down and twisting and rotating back and forth. The rotation occurs as if it is under the control of someone's hand and is quite distinct from the kinds of motions that you'd normally find in nature. Actions stop and start very suddenly with very large accelerations or small. This is a solid steel ball which must weigh 10 to 15 pounds or more. One of the clearest indications that I can see of inanimate matter being under conscious control. John, however, has not recognized any overt conscious effort to control the motions of the things that go on in the field, but admits there may be some subconscious activity. Now we switch to levitation of semi-solids. In this case, a milkshake in a plastic container, and you can see it's starting to take off tries to take off en masse, but only a portion of it is affected first. Starts rising out of the cup, and eventually the whole mass takes off. Another sequence of this in a different part of the active area. Many wet marks on the floor from experiments with liquids taking off. white paste in a white bowl which attempts to take off and you will see a glop of it after it hit the ceiling 10 feet above. Notice that there is a, a, an almost circular effect of the peaks. There's the main central peak to the right and several other peaks forming around in roughly a circle and the bowl takes off. And there's the piece 
on the ceiling. In this sequence, we see some uh, apple juice in a cup or glass taking off en masse along with the glass. The glass and the juice take off together. Note especially the surface of the liquid as it takes off. You note that it does not tilt. The liquid does not stay level with the uh, perpendicular to uh, gravity, for instance. It stays as if locked to the glass in which it is sitting. It does not swirl around. In this case, we have frozen orange juice, or I should say apple juice, which takes off and leaves a chunk of frozen water at the bottom of the glass. on the bottom of the glass you can see is frost. There's a slight motion of the glass as the bulk of the frozen juice separates from the ice that is holding it to the bottom. In this case, we have a small ring of aluminum which flips open like a jack-in-the-box. And the top portion actually separates and dances around and then fuses itself back on in a completely rigid kind of position. different setup this time where we see a cast iron piece in black in front of a turned piece behind simply crush up and eventually this piece melds into itself forms a glob these are examples of fracturing of solid material primarily metals. The aluminum bar you see in front is approximately an inch and a half in diameter. There's a ruler behind it, and it's uh, perhaps 10 inches long. Under the action of the field, it simply gives up its tenfold strength, and the crack forms, and a number of pieces break off. better shot with the ruler scale behind. Fracturing sequences can take anywhere from essentially instantaneous breaking to well over half an hour as the sequence from which these shots took, it did take place. It is apparent that the material suffers from a molecular disruption, tensile strength disappears and then comes back instantly as the material relaxes and contracts. However, as it relaxes, it does not 
form a blob or a liquid state, except on particular occasions you'll see shortly. It maintains. Another short, fat piece of aluminum standing on end, acting like a chunk of jelly. It's approximately three inches tall and an inch and a bit in diameter. Another shot of the upright aluminum bar. Notice that it is actually plastic. The base is sitting on the plywood platform and not lifting off as a solid piece would. This is obviously a bulk effect, not just a surface effect. In this sequence, we in this sequence, we see a plastic bottle that is empty, but has the cap severe, uh, securely put on. Seems to be breathing. But this is an odd action, as the cap is on tightly. The question is, where does the air go when this bottle collapses? It appears as if the Hutchison effect is able to reduce the density or the volume of material, such as, in this case, air, and in cases you've seen and will see water and liquid in an ice bath. If this was to be done mechanically and a squeeze or pressure put on laterally sideways, the air pressure inside would no doubt force other parts to bulge out or to deform somewhat. This is not the case in this sequence. The video clip that you just saw was produced by the Hutchison apparatus in the form that you see approximately on the board here and that you saw in the video clip that showed the insides of Hutchison's first 1981 laboratory. There are a number of components that are active in this circuit. And I have put in a block diagram form those components which, in John's and my thinking, were those most responsible for producing the effect.